go live. So imagine if there's a tool that would help you ultimately spy on your competitors, instantly come up with great video ideas and title ideas and get more views and clicks. Well, you may have heard about the tool before. It's called vidIQ, but I actually encourage you, you probably haven't heard about the features we're going to talk about in this video. And I'm actually going to be breaking down 11 features of the web-based app that nobody knows about really. And you can check out uh, time codes and chapters on this video to find those details. And so um, I wanna start off though, and just show you this really cool AI title recommendations to give you an idea of what's possible here. So imagine you had a gardening channel and it was all about like tomatoes. You just type in like tomatoes and ultimately you can um, start instantly getting title ideas how to use tomatoes to kill a rat. Didn't know that was possible. How to grow your own tomatoes from seeds, which might inspire you to start um, coming up with a way you're gonna structure your title, or this actually might serve you up with a specific video idea that you can use. And so we're gonna be talking about 11 of those features, but if you're just jumping on, my name is Sean Cannell. This is Think Media. Smash the like button if you are fired up for the training today. And I'm going to be sharing these 11 features as well as a message about YouTube this year towards the end of the video. So I encourage you to stick around. But let's dive in to number one. Um, and today's video is brought to you by vidIQ as well. Uh, but let's jump to the first tip and I'll tell you about a cool deal you can get into. And that's the AI title recommendation. So let me know in the comments. What is your niche? What is your niche? You know, here on YouTube, uh, here on Think Media, we talk a lot about cameras. And so I could type in just camera on this tool and it says the top three camera features everyone needs. Like as I'm doing this, I'm getting excited to make videos because again, just boom, the AI title recommendations come up. Um, is the camera worth it? Now, that is an incomplete title, but it's a great title idea because it might be like, is the M50 still worth it in 2022, right? So that's just how quickly you can start using this tool. Now, I should probably take a step back because, you know, when it comes to vidIQ, which you may use, and let me know if you're already a user, there's so many great features. There's the channel audit tool. There's tools to help you when you're uploading videos. There's tools um, that are uh, uh, to the right side of your videos where it shows you where tags are, are ranking, where you're ranking on YouTube, view velocity, all kinds of stuff. But actually, I should explain what I'm looking at here. And this is the unknown kind of area of vidIQ, which is the website. It's the web portal app.vidIQ.com. And so once you have signed up for vidIQ and, you know, if you want to uh, sign up and you haven't grabbed uh, vidIQ, you can get a free trial on their boost plan at vidIQ.com forward slash think. Um, if you want to um, even just use the free version, that's available for you there. And that link is in the description down below. And once you're signed up, you'll be able to log into your vidIQ dashboard and start seeing all of these cool features. I'm going to go through 11 of them. And again, the first one is the AI title recommendations, which you can see here, pretty self-explanatory. And then watch this. You can just refresh this and it will start giving you more title ideas. So you really are never gonna get creatively stuck by using a tool like this. This is why it gives you an unfair advantage. How to pick the best camera for your photos. That'd be a good video for Omar El Takori on the Think Media team to make. What is the best camera? the best camera for content creators. Um, but let's keep it moving. The second one is top keyword opportunities. And so I can come down here. Now, this is gonna be telling me which keywords are generating the most traffic on our channel already to double down on that. Now, there's a couple of videos we've made all about sound effects, um, free sound effects you can use in your videos, um, meme sound effects you can use in your videos. Those videos on Think Media have been getting a ton of views. And so you can see meme sound effects as a search term has been incredibly effective on Think and uh, as well as things like how to start a YouTube channel for beginners. So what is top keyword opportunities telling you? It's telling you what search terms are leading to the most traffic on your channel so that you can follow up with those video topics and ultimately uh, make more videos around those 
topics. Pretty self-explanatory. Next is competitors. Now we're going to come back to this one, but you are allowed to and able to select your competitors. Now, you know, I like to think about a lot of the competitors here are my friends like Vanessa Lau. She's speaking at Grow a Video Live, you know, coming up in, uh, you know, 60 days. Uh, I was just with Film Booth on a vidIQ stream. So you can actually see vidIQ is technically a competitor. They're also helping people with YouTube. Um, but what's cool about this is you can see Man, who's experienced a lot of growth lately? And we'll actually, again, we're going to come back to this one because once we go, if you look across the top of the screen, we have a lot of cool features to go through. We can see some insights from similar channels or basically channels you want to monitor, channels you want to see what's working for them. Do they, did they drop a video idea or they, they drop a topic that I want to react to, that I want to put my point of view out there? And so again, this is giving you an unfair advantage because you have information coming your way so that you can make more intelligent content strategy decisions on your channel. Let's go to number four, the top videos from your channel. And uh, this one right here is a nice snapshot to see, okay, what are the top videos specifically that are getting view velocity is, is part of that. How many views per hour? And if you are taking notes, you know, and you haven't thought about the term VPH, you know, write that down in your notes app or your Evernote on your Android, um, because view, VPH is huge. How many views per hour is this video getting? It's a, it's a, it's a term of velocity, right? And so, for example, this video was published 22 days ago but it's still getting 100 views an hour. More impressive is this video was published two years ago and it's getting 83 views an hour. So now I can look at some of these top videos and recognize that the way the YouTube algorithm works in terms of suggested and recommended and wanting to keep people on platform for as long as possible, that if someone would indicate that they consumed this work from home desk office ideas video, to the YouTube algorithm, that it would be wise and intelligent for us at Think Media to follow up with more home office ideas or desk setup ideas. And, and we are, in fact, doing that because we use this tool to create an unfair advantage to say, okay, what are the themes and what types of content should I ultimately be making next? And so um, we also could spin that off into a series, which we're doing. It might be, you know, ultimately best wireless accessories for video editors. You start thinking through, okay, how could I strategically spin this off and learn from the fourth tool that's all off of app.vidiq.com of the top videos on the channel and how could we follow those up? Number five, top search terms for your channel. So this one now is the search terms, driving views, to our videos. Final Cut Pro Tutorial, Funny Sounds, Final Cut, Think Media, how to edit your YouTube videos. Pretty self-explanatory, but again, a great way to clearly identify maybe other topics you should double down on. But now, buckle your seatbelt because this is where it gets super interesting and this is called the Daily Ideas Tool. Now, if you haven't heard about this yet, maybe you're already using vidIQ. This is freaking rad. And so what we're going to do is click on the top of our screen here, go to a whole nother tab. And now we have daily ideas. So right here is this is, you know, AI, artificial intelligence, giving you the best topics suited for your channel. And you can save or dismiss 50 brand new ideas per day. Now we'll dive into this. But what's also cool, if, if you haven't downloaded the vidIQ app on your Android or your iPhone, make sure to get that because this is a lot of these features are there and the daily IT, uh, ideas tool is there. It's kind of like Tinder for YouTube video ideas. Swipe left or right. I want to make that one. I don't want to make that one, right? Uh, shout out to uh, all the singles on Tinder. Listen, um, so now we're here. This is our channel, Think Media, and this is in real time giving me video ideas. And then it's giving us also a view prediction, which is kind of cool. Like these top ones are most likely if you make this exact video idea, but here's, here's an important distinction. It could just be the jumping off point. Like it's going to be the origination of the idea. A lot of the heavy lifting is ultimately done 
But now you're going to, of course, bring your unique spin to it, do a little research. It's saying that ultimately these first couple have a very high likelihood of getting the most views possible. Then the next are going to be high and then it goes down to medium. And this is a big deal because you only have so much time. Like, do you ever feel overwhelmed on YouTube? You feel like you have too much to do. I mean, you might have school right now. You got work. This is a side hustle. And so if you're going to make one video a week for the next four weeks, think about all the different possibilities that those videos could be. There's literally thousands of possibilities of the next video you could make. If you really want to get an edge on YouTube, you always want to try to make the next best video that's going to get the most views. And then you're also going to want to try to make the next best video that's also easiest to make. Because maybe you go, that would be a great video idea, but it would take me three weeks to make it. So if you can find the intersection of the next best video that's going to get the highest amount of views, that also meets with, oh yeah, I actually know how to do that. That wouldn't be too tough. Then you're going to grow your channel faster when you have limited time. So, you know, as Sean Cannell using this tool, this one just shouts at me how to make a YouTube thumbnail using Canva. This, this is actually a six part six part, five part. I want to make a whole series on this because it's uh Canva's gigantic. I saw Canva advertising on Hulu and I was like, this is going to be a thing. And so ultimately I, what I can do is I can say save and add that to my saved ideas to circle back and potentially make that idea. Now, let me refresh the page because ultimately what you can also do best SEO for a YouTube channel let me see if this is going to load. It's actually going to tell me too the top 10 ranked videos for this search term. So right here, I can determine if I want to, I can drill down in more research to see who I'm competing against. Should I build out this video idea? Now we love video search and my uh, engine optimization, some older videos here, three steps to rank. I haven't made a video on ranking on YouTube in a while. Um, and so I, that, that would be a great one to make. And so you actually know that here's a, here's a key too. If you're brand new on YouTube, you need to season your channel up a little bit. You'll start getting ideas as soon as you post one video, but you'll be better off. The more you have, uh, posted videos, the more you've allowed, even if it's not huge growth, just some momentum, some suggestion in the algorithm, some recommendations of your videos in the algorithm. Now this tool is going to help you double down on what's working, especially if you just feel overwhelmed, not knowing what video to make next. And so uh, let's look at just a couple more, you know, how to return on YouTube. I don't know what that means. So Whatever. Dismiss. Easy, right? How anim ch animation channels broke YouTube. Like, I don't want to do that one either. Uh, but how to get a thousand subscribers on YouTube. Of course, um, seven best hosting sites for bloggers and marketers. Now, again, Maybe that is like, well, that's a good idea, but I don't know the answer to that. I'm not a big expert on blogging. And so great idea, but not a great idea for me. Or maybe an idea I could research for five hours, but that's not going to be the fastest way to get another video done. So again, this is just, you will never run out of good content ideas and strategic content ideas using the daily ideas tool. Now, well, for speed's sake or honoring your time's sake, we'll speed up. But again, I want to encourage you, uh, we've broken down different aspects of vidIQ in other videos. And so we'll have that playlist in the videos in the description here on YouTube so you can study more to really maximize, especially if you've invested in a membership there, because the rabbit hole goes deep, Alice. Like there's a lot of mystery, magical cats inside of the analogy just broke apart there. But ultimately, uh, vidIQ is pretty um, incredible. And so we'll keep going with this web-based tools, but Daily Ideas is really, really cool. And uh, hit like if you're getting value. Let's go to the keyword tool next. Now, I love this tool. If anyone says keywords are dead on YouTube, they're wrong. If anyone says tags are dead, they're right. But they're wrong too, because watch, tags aren't gonna like help your video perform better. Like you can't take a horrible video and just add magical tags to it and it's gonna do better. However, you wanna research before you press record. And so really keyword research is more about topic research, is more about idea generation, and it's more about verifying whether or not you should make a video and what the ultimate potential viewership of that video is. So keyword research is still super relevant in 2022. And as we land on this page, we're going a little bit deeper here. We're on app.vidiq.com. 
And we're going a little bit deeper here on the top keywords for the channel first. So you can see, as we mentioned, our meme sound effects video is, is influencing some of this, our sound effects videos, fart sound, of course, you know, maybe we should just upload just 10 farts with, I don't, well, I don't want those subscribers though. Ultimately that would attract the wrong people. I think as with this one, I won't say it. Shoot. Video just got demonetized. <laughs> it's not, it's not funny. Um, okay. So how to make a YouTube channel. Of course, some of these are obvious. This is just showing some keywords that are already kind of leading traffic to the channel. Uh, over here, we see a bigger list of top 10 search terms for the channel. Um, this one's leaping out to me. We we've done a few GoPro hero 10 things. Um, but but we could do more and now watch. So it stood out to me. I clicked on it. Now I'm seeing, okay, Grow Pro Hero 10, good search volume only medium competition. VidIQ is essentially analyzing how much content it, there is on it. A lot, I'm sure, but it is kind of underserviced. All right. Like I, I just my intuition and now confirming that with VidIQ, it's a truly an opportunity. Like uh, not only that, we now can come over here and drill down on maybe angles of GoPro Hero 10 versus the nine versus videos are always good. Beginner's guide, great. Um, maybe versus uh, a hyper smooth test. Some of those have been done, but cream always rises to the top no matter how many cups of coffee you pour. So maybe another quality version of that, good editing, maybe a YouTube short of a hyper smooth test. Mm, okay, so we're brainstorming out here. We're planning even just an overheating test. One video about one thing, okay. And again, this is all coming out of clicking on GoPro Hero 10 and uh, ultimately drilling down on that one keyword. So again, if I wanted to come back here and go toe, may, toes, I think that's how you spell it. Growing tomatoes, how to grow tomatoes. And as we dig into here, this is some of the opportunities we have. Search volume. I like going by the highest search volume just to see what are like the top level thinking of what people are looking for. How to grow, grow tomatoes makes sense. Growing tomatoes from seed. Okay. You're understanding the language people are searching for and people still search with specific words and language. I would not title my video how to grow. I would, I would sauce that up. No pun intended. I would tomato sauce that up. <laughs> this, is, this is ridiculous. Uh, you know, and now we can even go deeper. Growing beef, steak, tomatoes from seed. Some people say, man, they're like, you just, all the keywords are taken. It's not true. All the searches are taken. It's, they're wrong. Like there's so much opportunity. In fact, when you're really starting from scratch and trying to get your first 1,000 subscribers, Jumping off with with a search based strategy is a good way to get some traction, and it's not that it's not really a viral strategy, but it's a practical strategy because you you have a gardening channel, you do you know you start making these niche videos, which again, remember this might be easy for you. You're like, dude, I am an expert at growing tomatoes from seed hydroponically. I could just go into my greenhouse right now with my phone on and be like, hey, you want to know how to? Let me just break it down. Upload that video optimize it correctly, throw it on YouTube. And then the cool thing about search-based content is it only gets 22 views. But the next month, it also gets 22 views. Mm, and then month three, it actually got 200 views because now all these people that want to know how to grow tomatoes from seed hydroponically are finding the video. And then the next month, it actually, now it gets 1,000 views a month. And it brings in about 25 subscribers a month. And it's just one video that was relatively easy for you to create that you leveraged, you know, data-driven insights from this tool to publish that out there. And it's not just about the one video. You do that with 10 videos as you dig down in these tools. That's just the keyword tool, right? So at the top here at app.vidiq.com, you've got the keyword tool, but let's keep it going. Oh, this top videos from your competitors. You don't even want to see this next slide, this next screenshot. Smash like if you're enjoying yourself this morning. I uh, My coffee must just be hitting. I had a little bit of, um, you know, organic 
Ethiopia from Dark Moon Coffee, Las Vegas, Rise and Grind. It's a new day full of new opportunities and new possibilities. Literally think my son is about to come into the room in the middle of my live stream. What a day. Son, I am live streaming. All right, listen. So here is your <laughs> Um, Where is your mom? What is going on? This is a sponsored video, son. Um, all right. So uh, let's see how, how well we can do this. All right. As we are looking at the competitors, we start with Billy on screen. Now we got this. What a day. Listen. Um, okay. So you can compare channels here. Now, again, you're going to manually select these. Um, and what I've done is, of course, on Think Media, I uh, ultimately oh. think that, oh, thank you, wow. mother. <laughs> Um, just live with 286 people here. Um, okay, so um, top videos from our competitors. We're back. Um, you know, on Think Media, our promise is definitely the tech side of things, cameras, gear for creators, and then the YouTube tips side of things. So a lot of my friends, Roberto, Daryl, Nick, you know, um, I have some of those channels. And then because we're kind of also in that tech, I have a couple of tech channels. So you're gonna manually select these. Like, who are some channels that you want to track how your channel performs against competitors now daryl's on here and i don't i don't know why it's minus nine million views maybe he deleted a bunch of videos or something so if we delete that then we're going to get a little bit clearer here and you could see you know we got Catherine and vanessa and some different people and um we've got uh you know ali uh abdal on here doing great six 0.5 million views in the last 30 days. Here's Think Media on the right side uh, with 3.7 million. Uh, even Think Media podcast will track against our podcast, which is if you haven't checked out our podcast that comes out every Tuesday. What are you doing? You didn't know about the Think Media podcast? It's everywhere. It's on YouTube. It's on its own channel. It's on Spotify. Um, and, and then we could turn on and off to compare different competitors just to see, okay, you know, what are they doing? What kind of views are they getting? And uh, what can we learn from them? But here's where this could also get interesting. You could go uh, cumulative. Um, you could go daily. Uh, you could go total in the last, say, 12 months. And so here's all Think doing 51 million in the last 12 months. Um, you could do also subscribers, uh, how many videos they're uploading, which could be interesting. <laughs> Why is Roberto minus 261? Who's deleting videos out here? So, so this also is kind of a good barometer. I mean, this is a cool comparison. I mean, look how, how much we upload at Think Media, which helps because we are a team of creators. Um, but if you upload more videos, you can get more views, assuming they're quality, average daily views. And so I actually look at this a lot. And I look at it as we also scroll down. I'll basically show you my favorite way to use this tool. And I, I switch these competitors, quote unquote, and again, like all love just different different folks looking at you know what they're doing i like to look around here how many views are they getting a day have they experienced but my biggest question is have they experienced any significant breakout growth and why right and so um ultimately then my favorite part of all this though is the summary of the top videos from your competitors so what you can ultimately include now is okay i want to sort by views or views per hour that velocity this week or maybe this month and i want to look at some different video ideas now, it's kind of interesting i don't know let me know if you would actually like a book video because i want to talk about best books for maybe youtubers but i might even go wider like best books for online business that's kind of stuff we already do on our podcast channel but, you know, uh, Ollie's video is is doing great on there. It's got a ton of views per hour. This book will make you happy. Uh, and so, so, you know, inspiration on maybe, okay. By the way, one of the reasons why I added him as a competitor is because of using YouTube's tool that shows you your viewers also watch this kind of content. I like your chance of being, if I do a book video, or a top books video here on Think Media, the chance of the correlative value against that video, which is a month old and getting 2,800 views per hour. Um, let's just see too, just general views on that. Or actually, it'll probably switch it up. But uh, you know, again, 
the angle, the positioning, do we go out? Do we do something about the iPad? Again, more stuff on the bookshelf. And if I then know that would indicate that some of our viewers are readers um, and ultimately um, that they, I could get into that correlative recommendation algorithm uh, with Ali Abdal. So, okay. We also have eight steps for shooting interviews. Interesting. We haven't done interview stuff in a while. Parker Walbeck, um, creative transitions. Good one. See what I'm saying? Like, so these are all, these would be like right in our wheelhouse and more so than just doing daily video ideas or keyword based thinking. We're trying to get right into the vortex of trends or other videos that are getting views right now in our YouTube interest graph or in our YouTube community graph, meaning YouTube will cluster you with channels. It starts to associate you. Viewers that watch Think Media also like this other kind of stuff. And viewers that, you know, I don't know about you, but if I want to research a new tech thing, you know what I started researching yesterday was Bluetooth headphones that, that I could also connect to USB. So I could start walking around the house when I'm on Zoom meetings and like lay down and stretch out and do stuff. So I started watching YouTube videos and uh, all about it, but I did not just watch one U YouTube video. I wanted to get multiple different perspectives, et cetera. Right. So when you start realizing you tap into your, your, uh, interest graph, your community graph, your viewers also watch other viewers like these, there's a lot of opportunities to be had there. Um, now I saw a good question come in here that ultimately was wondering, do you manually add competitors? And you do, you do manually add your competitors and you can change them up. Now, this is one of the benefits of vidIQ boost is you ultimately get 20 competitors to track. And so, uh, I believe in the free version, you might be able to track like one or two competitors. And that's, what's kind of cool about vidIQ. Um, is that the free version is really worth taking advantage of because you can get started with some of these tools for free. But ultimately, if you kind of want to take this to a, a more pro level and you'd say, I'm serious about growing my YouTube channel and I just want to maximize all these features. If you want to check that out, you could get a 30 day free trial on vidIQ, um, a paid plan at vidIQ.com forward slash thank. Uh, big thanks to vidIQ for sponsoring today. Oh, Sean, they're a sponsor. That's why you're talking about them. Listen, um, I've actually been using vidIQ for like a decade. Uh, as long as they've been out in the early days of growing Think Media, I fell in love with vidIQ. I ran into Rob Sandy, the founder of vidIQ, not Rob in the videos, Rob Sandy, the uh, owner and founder of the company at Vid Summit 2. Vid Summit's on like 10 now or something. And uh, we've just grown a relationship over the years. What's been cool is they're so devoted to making the platform better, all their suite of tools. They have a great developer team. They're continuing to pr uh, improve vidIQ and the product and so on and so forth. And so we only recommend stuff at Think Media that we love and use and would willingly and happily recommend to our friends and family. And by the way, if you don't want to check it out, then don't check it out. But I think it's really cool. And I'm super grateful that they're a sponsor and a partner. And you can check out all the details in the description down below. But we've got more tools to cover, friends. Because now we have top channels your subscribers are subscribing to. Number nine. Number nine out of, actually, I got a bonus, number 12. Did I promise you 11? We're going to 12 today. I added a title later. Um, top channels your subscribers are subscribing to. Um, is super interesting. So now you can discover who who are some new kids on the block step by step, you know? And uh you could discover channels your audience is watching and add them as competitors. So you could just add them right in here. Um and you could get into some very interesting care like I'm interested here. I, after this, I want to go research some of these people like what's what's Brent Daniels doing? real estate coach. You know, we help a lot of entrepreneurs, uh, real estate people, financial people. And I also like looking for collaborations, interview guests on Think Media podcast, stuff like that. So so that could all happen here. But also there could be the interesting thought about what are people, um, yeah, you know, what can you learn from these channels? Um, furthermore, you could, you know, top videos watched by your subscribers. Now, in this case, a lot of news stuff that we're seeing here over on the uh, left side of the screen. 
and that's number 10, top videos watched by your subscribers. And that might seem irrelevant, but in a lot of times, it could be very relevant. One of the best strategies you can do in, in just online marketing in general, in some cases, content creator, YouTube content creation, is tie into news. Like tie your content into the news in a relevant way. In, in, in some cases, it's really cool to see that sometimes it just might be overt. Like what vidIQ themselves are doing right now with Creators for Peace in actually being a part of change in the world with the war and everything that's going on. I mean, that is ultimately tying into the news and wanting to make a difference. But in some cases, of course, you could tie into like headlines and tie into things that are happening. You probably saw everybody this week tie into Will Smith and Chris Rock. I mean, there's, there's, it's, it's smart. I've even heard some self-aware creators go, and I, you know, had to make a video on this just to get cheap views because uh, why wouldn't I, you know? Um, that YouTube can be a lot about timing. And so top videos watched by your subscribers could also show you some of their psychology, what they may be interested in that can influence the videos you take, you create next. Number 11, best time to post. Now, this feature is also uh, in YouTube, in your YouTube analytics, but it's really nice that when you go to app.vidiq.com and you tap into all of these features, it gives you um, a cool a little bit more detailed and dynamic graph of when's the best time to post. And it simplifies for you. You know, the current best time to post on a Thursday is 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. If we want to post at the peak um, and the logic, this is an interesting, and you may have asked, when should I post my YouTube video? And there's kind of different thinking on this. I actually make the decision to post before the wave. There's probably wisdom to post at the peak because if the video drops and most of your viewers watch it all at once, then your goal is ultimately to get um, the best view velocity possible to get things going. Uh, but I'll tell you what we do here at Think Media is we would look at this and we go at that that ramp up. We don't really do the 3 a.m. time. We would do the we usually go 5 a.m. and then we ride this wave. It really tells you though that we definitely shouldn't do midnight or even nighttime where it's it's going to be a drop off. And so again, best time to post, you can summarize it with overall, or you could figure out that, okay, we're going to do a drop on Sunday. Maybe it's going to be a little bit different. And you know, what's interesting is I bet yours is a lot more radical. Uh, and, and you see a lot more divergence. I think because think media has grown so large subscriber wise, it's become a more flat bell curve. Our Think Media podcast channel is very dynamic. We were comparing the two things. So that'll be an interesting feature for you to research on your own channel. Uh, and I'd love to see uh, what you discover. Have you been getting value in this video? Click like. I have uh, a bonus tip number 12. But I also just wanted to share an encouraging message with you. I'm going to say I appreciate you. And I'll answer a couple questions here as well that are relevant. Uh, I have vidIQ Pro. Can I do this in just Boost or Pro? You have a lot of really cool things in Pro. In fact, uh, Pro um, is uh, some of my favorite things. You get 10 daily video ideas. You can break down your competitors. Um, you can, you know, you get your proprietary keyword research. Pro activates the keyword research. So that's why I love the Pro level. Training videos in real time tells you your prime time to post. And when you step into Boost, you also can go 50, 50 daily video ideas, uh, other pro word uh, features, including the AI recommendations for titles. So anyways, if you go to Upgrade, you could compare those things. Boost is definitely more expensive. You get a free plan regardless um, to at least try it out with our link um, at vidIQ.com forward slash think. But pro is really great. And, and you know, just speaking to you from my heart, I think Pro is one of the best investments to make if you're really just starting out. Because if you're really just starting out, I want to encourage you, you can grow, you can get momentum, and you can get money flowing. And I think that boost is a no-brainer investment um, for, by the way, I also had that on five channels, which is super, you know, we also have multiple channels, right? So there's, there's, you you're you when you have multiple channels, you're more of a pro user, and and small tweaks lead to giant peaks. Once you have momentum, small it's more like big moves lead to big momentum. 
when you're starting, but small tweaks lead to, to giant peaks once you actually have crossed a thousand subscribers, 5,000 subscribers. So again, if you were like, you know, I'm really early in my career, uh, pro is a really good way to get in. Once you're more advanced, boost is such a no brainer. Reinvesting in your YouTube channel to get those data driven insights, um, it's just worth it. And uh, that's what Sasha's day says. Yeah, $10 a month is definitely worth it. I would agree with that. I think the best to test out using the 30 day trial, I totally agree. I mean, it's cool that vidIQ lets you do that because there's nothing to risk. You can always uh, uh, cancer, uh, cancel. But dad's driveway says, don't ba bother, go straight to boost. Um, great point there as well. We'll get to number 12 here in just uh, a second. Um, what's your advice on how to get to your first 1,000 subscribers on year 2022? Um, we'll actually update the description and post a video to uh, our best training on that. Um, the training actually is a little bit older, but it's it's unbreakable. And that is exactly what I would recommend um, doing. Um, and uh, how can I increase my my click through rate? Um, three things. There's really only three things that are going to increase it. And that's going to be your title, your thumbnail, but there's the missed one. And it's actually your topic. People will actually forgive a not great thumbnail and title if you're creating videos about topics they care about. Furthermore, if you make a topic that like your subscribers aren't that interested in, but you have the greatest thumbnail in the world and your title was better prose and language than Mark Twain himself writing out, you know, the best, most powerful words of all time, it won't matter because if people don't care about the topic, they don't want to click on it. So that's why understanding the viewer, your ideal viewer, the creator who understands the viewer best wins. So you're making topics people actually want to see. That's why if you're new on YouTube, something like the daily ideas tool or using this unfair advantage software is helping you make the right topics. The skill of making better thumbnails, highly recommend Canva. Um, Canva's got a, a free level and then eventually upgrade there as well. You know, um, we uh, will link up a video to a thumbnail training with Canva in the description. So definitely better thumbnails, definitely better titles, but really dialing in your topics and understand who you're making the video for, knowing who you're talking to and really speaking to that person and that audience, that's going to help you. And then what's interesting is click-through rate is also influenced even by view duration to a point because that influences how, how wide your video is recommended. And if everything else is going good, it actually can get more clicks on the video. Although it's the more, the more impressions and, and widely spread your video goes on YouTube actually typically drives your click through rate down just because they're sharing it with a much more wider group when it's not a bad thing, because ultimately the AVD and the CTR is pushing your video. And I might've just sounded like I was speaking gibberish. Uh, but, uh, those are just a few thoughts for you, but, um, here is uh, what I wanted to share with you really quick. And then I, I got number 12 to share with you. That's cool here at uh, app.vidiq.com as well. And um, it's this, you know, I, I wanted just to encourage you with some thoughts about YouTube in 2022. And it's this, um, I think that we've noticed, and I've been reading a lot of our comments, our Instagram DMs, and I've, I've seen, you know, a lot of people in our community that kind of just feel like quitting. And maybe this is you, or if you're human, this has been you in the past, or probably be you in the future. And I just want to encourage you, um, don't quit. Um, now, of course, you may actually want to strategically quit something that isn't working on YouTube. I'm not just talking about just, I blindly hope this will work. I've uploaded 200 videos and nothing is happening. You probably need to pivot. You might need to change your strategy. You might need to change your niche. You might need to change um, your approach. You might need to pivot your whole deal. Maybe you should go faceless channel voiceover. Maybe you should go draw my life. Maybe you should go like, there's so many different content formats you could embrace. And I think again, Albert Einstein said, insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. There's times when you definitely need to pivot. But what I've noticed is that a lot of people do give up too soon. And as I was preparing for the stream today, I just felt that there was somebody in the Think Media community that needed some encouragement to just not quit. 
And I, and I want to be vulnerable with you and say, over the last 12 years, you know, we just hit too many subscribers. There's been a lot of times when I've wanted to quit, whether it's when my wife almost died, whether it's when we were $20,000 negative when we tried to throw our first event, Grow a Video Live, whether it's when I started feeling chronic pain in my hands and my arms and dealing with repetitive stress injury, whether it's when we would have haters or negative comments start showing up and I was already not in a good, you know, psychological state in that moment. There's been so many times on the journey when I've really wanted to cl quit, when all my freelance clients fired me. And these, those are just the big times. I mean, I think that sometimes as creatives, people underestimate just the mental pressure, the emotional pressure of pouring your heart into videos and pouring your heart into coming up with ideas. And I don't think that sometimes you give yourself enough credit because like me, I grew up actually on six acres doing a lot of hard labor, which is rare these days. But I grew up uh, cutting a ton of grass, had a lawn mowing business, uh, literally on tractors with mower decks, riding lawn mowers, weed whackers, push mowers. I'm, I'm, I'm a grass cutting expert. And so now today, when a lot of my work is done on a keyboard and a mouse and a laptop and in a home office, it could be easy for people externally to underestimate the, the weight and the heaviness of creative work. But it's real work and it causes real stress and stress has physical implications on your body and it causes real anxiety and it causes real pressure that you just need to give yourself grace for. So I just wanna encourage you, I don't know if, it's going good on YouTube for you right now, or if it's hard on YouTube right now. I don't know if things are good in your family right now, or if things are challenging right now. I don't know if if you're having health challenges or not. That's something I'm personally dealing with. My wife, if you know our story, you know, we've had all kinds of things, and yet we didn't quit. And when we wanted to quit, we took a nap, maybe ate some high sugary foods, which aren't good for your health, but just to kind of numb the pain for a while. But then we got back to it, you know? Then we got back and just kept going. And there is breakthrough for you on the other side. And I'm not trying to say that everything's gonna work either. That's not, that's not false hope or false po uh, positivity. There is times to pivot. And one other thing, and Billy's helping me link up videos in the description, really good podcast episode we did on strategic quitting. It's based on Seth Godin's book, The Dip. And and I just want you to know that myself, Nolan, Omar, Heather, the Think Media team, we believe in you. And, and we want to give you tools and resources and encouragement. And we don't ever want to give you hype like your channel is just guaranteed to work because it isn't. But I do believe there's opportunity for everybody on YouTube to find their spot, to find their angle. And that might be on the other side of strategically quitting something. However, ultimately committing to the macro that when it comes to, you know, I'm going to keep hustling for my family. I'm going to keep hustling for my vision. I'm going to keep hustling to make money online. I'm just going to keep hustling. I'm going to keep finding a way. I'm going to try something different. I'm going to keep learning. I'm going to keep growing. I'm not going to quit. Like I'm going to keep pushing. I'm going to keep studying. I'm going to keep, I'm going to take a break if I need to. I'm going to take some time off if I need to. I don't got to, I'm not beholden to the YouTube algorithm gods or some weird schedule. You can take a break. Tired eyes rarely see a bright future. But after you take a, a break, don't quit. Keep going. You got this. I don't know if you needed to hear that today, but I did want to share that with you before we get to number 12 and, and let you know that uh, I appreciate you. Listen, um, number 12 out of these features is kind of a bonus tip. I mentioned all 11 for you is vidIQ Academy. Now, this is the kind of cool thing about this is it's just all included right here. If you haven't seen this, you've been on app.vidiq.com. You can go to the upper right-hand corner, vidIQ Academy, when you're logged into your vidIQ account, and boom, Boost courses. These, If you're at the Boost level, you've got courses from my friend Lee Ron, how to launch your channel in 30 days. You've got uh, how to set up your space for filming. Premium education that will help you go faster. In fact, look at this cool course, how to turn your YouTube channel into a business uh, from myself. And so, uh, this is free for all vidIQ Pro and above if you already have this. By the way, you could go watch this right now. You might be like, I didn't even know this was in here. And so kind of a cool thing, vidIQ continues to add more and more and more value. And uh, you can check all of this stuff out. Here's my course. Wow. 
there there he is weird inception blue hat and black think hat thinkmediamerch.com just kidding not really actually if you it's there uh the blue hat's not there we got to get the blue hat hats out there okay so vidIQ academy though another thing to put on your radar um if you uh want to check anything out check out links in the description in terms of the other vidIQ tools plus the 1000 subscribers video the think media podcast on strategic quitting um and uh i want to just thank you again for being a part of our community uh tutor says youtube is a marathon and not a sprint i posted 17 videos so far but i know that the first 100 videos are learning videos for me i would agree with that wendy in the house i appreciate you got the black hat the classic think media we're thinking different we're thinking bigger we are thinking for change we are thinking outside of the box and uh, again, really appreciate you. Tired eyes rarely see a bright future. If you need to take a break, get some rest, but then get back on your grind, man, because this next decade is gonna be the best decade on YouTube. The creator economy is exploding and there is a piece for you uh, in this creator economy world. Uh, just keep looking, keep learning, keep studying. You got this. Um, check out time codes to, to navigate through all of the 11 uh, features plus the 12th bonus feature. Smash like if you got value today and click or tap the screen for another video that will help you get to your first 1,000 subscribers. And I will see you in the next video. My name is Sean Cannell, Think Media. Peace.